हेलो दिस इज प्रोफेसर सी पी प्रकाशम फार्मर प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम इंटरनेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट फॉर पॉपुलेशन साइंसेस मुंबई आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट ए शेड्यूल एनालिसिस इन रिग्रेशन बाय यूजिंग एस पी एस एस वन ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट इश्यू इन द रिग्रेशन एनालिसिस इज द मॉडल वैलिडेशन इन द रिग्रेशन एनालिसिस model val validation is carried out by satisfying the assumptions involved in it what are the assumptions we will come across it is general practice to conclude the results based on highest r square or a significant t statistics the highest r square is the highest percentage variation explained by the dependent independent variable in determining the what are the assumptions involved in the regression one of the assumptions is the normality second one is linearity third one is homoecidacity and fourth one is absence of multicollinearity what is normality the residuals of a regression should follow a normal distribution this can be examined by plotting p dash p that is probability the normal predicted probability plots which is available in the spaces it is possible to determine that the residuals are normally distributed homoecidacity it refers to whether the residuals are equally distributed or tends to bunch together at some place or some values and at the other values spread apart from each other how can we test the homoecidacity is the analysis of variancy will explain the equality of variancy or homoecidacity of variancy it is possible to check this assumption by plotting the predicted values and residuals on a scattered plot another another assumption is the linearity it means that the predictor variables in the regression have a straight line relationship with the outcome variable that is the dependent variable if residuals are normally distributed and homoecidacity statistic then it assumed that the data set is linear the fourth assumption is the absence of multicollinearity multicollinearity refers to the predicted variables are highly correlated with each other hence the regression model will not be able to accurately associate it variancy in the outcome variable multicollinearity can be checked in two ways one is the correlation coefficients and another is the variancy inflammation factor value it is necessary to check the assumptions while carrying out the regression analysis that's what we discussed earlier by performing by using the residual analysis therefore we should try to understand what is residual a residual is a measure of how far away a point is vertically from the regression line in short it is the random error between the predicted value and observed actual value the residual which is referred as e e small e equals to y minus y cap assumed to be zero and it has to be tested by using the test therefore it is called observed value y minus expected value y cap y here y cap is the expected value the expected y is derived from the regression equation regression equation the simple regression equation y on x equals to y equals to a plus bx plus e also written as y equals to alpha plus beta x plus e where y is the dependent variable x is the independent variable a is a constant 
that is when x equals to 0 what is the corresponding value of y is determined by the constant value and b is the slope or it is also called a beta of the regression equation that is one unit of increment of x is observed corresponding increment of y, uh, in y that is called the slope of the regression equation and e is called the error which has not been explained by x and y is not been explained by the y x in the regression equation mentioned above with the input for the data if you give x and y we have to we can find out what is the a and what is the b that is the alpha and beta values can be found out what is regression equation the simple regression equation is y on x equals to y equals to a plus bx plus e also written as y equals to alpha plus beta x plus e where y is the dependent variable x is the independent variable a is a constant for x equals to 0 the corresponding value of y is determined by the a b is called beta or slope of the regression equation that is one unit increment value in x observed corresponding increment value in y is called the beta or b and e is called error term it is generally assumed that e equals to 0 but we have to test whether the e is not equal to 0 or equals to 0 in the regression equation mentioned above with the input data x and y the a which is constant b slope of the regression equation can be computed by using the least square method now we will try to look into what is residual analysis and the techniques involved let n data points where y i equals to b naught plus b1 that is beta naught plus b1 x x1 i plus b2 x2 i and so on beta n x n i plus e i where i equals to 1 to n where y is dependent variable and x1 i x2 i and so on are the independent variable with e i as the error term in the regression equation the fitted model is y cap equals to beta naught cap that is the estimated value plus beta 1 cap x1 plus beta 2 cap x2 and so on beta n cap xn the predicted responses at the i data point equals to y i cap equals to beta i cap plus beta 2 i cap x i plus beta 2 x 2 i cap plus and so on then the difference between observed and estimated value of y are called the residuals which is denoted as a small e small e i which is a residual equals to y i minus y i cap where i ranges between 1 to n e i reflects the amount of discrepancy between observed and predicted values which are present after having the least square model if the regression model is correct the standardized residuals would be that is e i s equals to e i by s tends to fall between minus 2 and plus 2 are randomly distributed about 0 this is the test for the residuals and we can find out the limits between minus to plus between plus or minus 2 properties of residuals by examining the following properties of residuals one can conclude the nature of residuals that is number one the sum of estimated y's equals to the sum of observed y's that is yi cap equals to yi 
Number two assumption is the sum of residuals is zero if the equation that is e i which is ranging between one to n sum of e i is equals to sum of y i minus y cap ranging between one to n. The another one is the sum of cross products of the explanatory variables x and the residuals is zero. That is summation of x i e i equals to summation of x i the product of y i minus y cap equals to zero. Another one is the sum of cross products of estimated values of y and the residual is also zero. That is the estimated value of y i cap multiplied by the e i that is the residual sum of that equals to zero. By testing through above properties one can estimate the best fit of the regression on the least square criteria. If you examine the first assumption or first property of the residual is that y i cap equals to y i that is the estimated y i equals to sum of observed y i if that is satisfies most of the other conditions will satisfy. That is why it is a general assumption we are making without testing that error term equals to zero. Therefore, one has to test and see how the residuals behave. How to find out the residuals and what are the uh, calculations involved by using the spaces we will try to understand. By identifying the outliers we can find out the residual pattern. Therefore, an outlier which is more concerned with the residual is the one observation or that observation which is much larger than the rest of the observations in the absolute value of two standard standardized residuals. We have come across that standardized residual said that ESI is the standardized residual. Therefore, the presence of such an extreme value that is called outlier can significantly affect the least square fitting of the regression model. Hence, the outlier is to be discarded or retained with a particular criteria. If you can see the graph on the right side will give you the pattern of outside outliers which are away from the regression line. Here we will illustrate with an example how to calculate the outliers and identify the residual. A researcher is interested to find out the relation between crude birth rate that is CBR and percentage of women marrying less than 21 years WMLA considering CBR as a proxy variable to fertility. Further it is assumed that early marriage leads to early conception contributing to increase in crude birth rate. You can see the right side the data is given the unit of analysis is district of a selected country. Here we can see the example how to calculate the linear regression as well as how to identify the outliers. This is the data which you have already entered into the A spaces format that is CBR and women marrying early age. Then click analyze. Once you click analyze you will get the regression and then click the linear then you will get the linear regression. This will give the how to analyze by using the data by using the linear regression model. Then selection of the variables. In this we have to identify the crude birth rate as a dependent variable which we have been assumed earlier as well as the independent variable women marrying below 21 years of age. Then coming to the options click statistics. Once you click statistics you will get the a window which will require that linear regression statistics there you get tick mark estimates confidence interval model fit descriptive and collinearity diagnostic. Down below you can see that residuals are there in that residual 
there is a Durbin Watson test case wise diagnosing outliers outside whatever standard deviation you give and as well as the all cases. If the number of cases very large then you can have outliers outside two standard deviation or three standard deviation. Now at present observations are only 21 therefore we will tick mark case wide diag diagnostic and all cases that will say calculate for the residue. Now we will first of all test normality therefore by plotting normal probability plots we can find out the for that options statistics below that is the plots once you click plot then you will get the linear regression plots in that x wherever x is there right side you bring dependent and another y is the z that is the uh, residual standardized residuals that will give then down below standardized residual plots we can plot it and understand whether there is a linear relationship or not therefore normal probability plot you tick mark it and right side you will find procedure all partial plots if you require you will tick it otherwise generally it is not required then continue once you say continue another option is there save we have to save the residuals because the number of observations are small we can identify and see the calculated value also then for further the when you click save then you will get the the linear regression save in that you can see the residual standardized that is most important and then down below you can see left side distance Mahalanobis, Cook's leverage values Mahalobanobis distance square or otherwise Cook's as well as the another for the present analysis we will use the Cook's method of uh, calculating the distance and whichever is less than one then we will consider as a variable otherwise it is a outlier then click that then you will get the here standardized and Cook's distance is you have to tick mark it once this has been done let us go back to the then this is the syntax value in this syntax you can see the directly the data activity regression and descriptive mean deviation mean standard deviation correlation and all these things will come then down below you can see the dependent variable that is only the part where you can change and do the repeated calculations for the linear regression and identifying the standard residuals then dependent is the CBR and the independent variable that is the method enter that is WMLA if you change that down below if you see the scattered plot and if you change the dependent variable then you can do the repeated calculations for the different variables once you got the syntax the SPSS output this SPSS output will give you the descriptive statistics first this descriptive statistics will give you mean standard deviation number of variables here there are 22 variables are there and all the 22 observations are there all the 22 observations are taken into consideration and to test the dependent linearity then we will have the correlation and correlation is significant that shows that there is a relation between the x and y variables that is the CBR and women marrying early age then come back to the model summary which is in the right side in the model summary tables in the regression you will find out the r r square adjusted r square and standard error of estimation in this adjusted r square and r square is given and that will give you the r square will give you the percentage of variation explained by the dependent uh, independent variable in determining the dependent variable here it is 64.3 percent which is higher down below you can see the analysis of variancy the analysis of variance also shows significance that shows that the observations are very close to each other and the homocidacity is existing not the heterocidacity which is a significant also that shows that observations are close to each other 
and then there is a relation between the observations and all the observations are taken together then come the coefficients which has been calculated for the regression the regression equation is y equals to cbr equals to 24.532 plus 0 0.185 the women marrying earlier then the important thing is that case wise we can identify which are the outliers when you look at that right side the table you will find out the case number standard residuals which has been calculated by ei esi divided by ei divided by s and then cbr cbr is the observed values then next column is the predicted values and next column is the difference between that residuals and the first uh, second column will give us the standardized residual then we are interested about the standardized residual which are away from plus or minus 2 when you look at the observation 22 the minus point minus 2.563 which is uh, away from minus 2 identified as a residual then to find out the linearity then we will we'll use the normal p and p plots by using the standardized regression standardized residual this shows that some observations are above a normal line some observations are below, below the normal line that shows that the linearity observation is not 100% uh, is successful then we have to identify who are the what layers therefore plotting this sketched plot we can find out minus 2 plus 2 of the standard residual we can find out the outliers you can see that observation 22 is the outlier which is away from minus 2 which is causing residual error therefore if you remove that and recalculate the entire the cbr as well as the uh, linear regression equation then we can find out the accurate then the variables for identifying the outliers and influential cases earlier we have used the option called save while saving it saves the standardized residual in the z r e minus underscore one and cuckoo's distance calculation is given when you look at the observation 22 that shows clearly minus 2.56267 and cuckoo's relation is the given at that properly for the observation 22 therefore these two are the important one we have to by judging this we have to remove or take away the observation number 22 and recalculate the entire run. therefore how to select how to remove the observations instead of removing it then we will say select cases in that select cases if condition absolute value of ZRE that is the standardized values less than 2 and COCO COO underscore 1 is less than 1 then we can take away we can take consider only the variables which are under this if condition and then recalculate the regression equation let us see how to recalculate that this is the syntax for that the top portion you can find out the selection of the variable and regression will give you the standard regression procedure that means we are taking away the outliers and calculating the regression only for the which are the minus 2 plus 2 of the standardized residuals then the results are there these results are compared with the uh, with residuals and removing the residuals number of observations are 22 with residuals and removing the residual the, there is a 21 observations the r square is 0.643 with residual and uh, removing that there is a slight increase 0.697 and then f ratio finds to be significant 
and beta coefficients with the CBR is also found to be significant. Therefore, by removing the residual, by removing the residual, it is uh, possible to enhance the R square and found out the significant T values on that. Therefore, the result shows by deleting the residual, R square values marginally increased from the earlier set of 0.643 observ of the observations by removing the residual, the outlier. Therefore, researcher has to decide whether to remove the outlier or to retain in the regression equation. That is the major decision a researcher has to say because when the observations are very small and when you are going to delete the residuals or outliers, then the observations will become still more small and sample size will become still more less. In that case, a researcher has to identify when the observations are very large, then it is possible to delete the outliers and recalculate the R square values. Thank you very much. Please like it, share it.